the Honorable Chairperson of this committee, Sen Senator Jingoy Estrada, the Honorable uh, Senator Attendance, Senator uh, Ronald Bato de la Rosa, Senator Bongo, to fellow government officials, magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. The Department of National Defense recognizes the financial implications of the Gaborian pensions on our military and uniform personnel. While we fully support the enactment of logistic measures to address the current issues hounding the pension system, the DND and the AP respectfully appeals that the, the morale and welfare of our soldiers be given due, due weight in this uh, deliberation, considering that uh, the mere uh, notion of, uh, of uh, modernizing or um, uh, our, our pension system, it created already some sort of apprehension. At present, mere discussions of proposals relating to retirement benefits, most especially the imposition of the pensionable age, has already affected the morale and caused uh, uneasiness, not only from within the active ranks of the armed forces, but even from our veterans and retirees. As pointed out by J1, the G General Romel Roldan, during our previous meetings and also uh, your honors, uh, we have uh, went to fifth ID and uh, we have uh, some sort of uh, discussions uh, with the personnel and the commanders, the commander Norcom and also the commander of fifth ID and all the personnel uh, in face to face and BTC. Uh, we we are know we anticipated that around 70 to 80 percent of our listed personnel eligible for optional retirement will gonna retire kasi ang uh, gusto nila sir yabel na po nila yung ano yung yung pension system ng current system kasi yung apprehension po ng uh, uh, new uh, possible new MUT law uh, magkakaroon po ng implications sa kanilang tinatawag na yung uh, retirement nila sa optional retirement ito po yung mga naka 20 years na po sa serbisyo to avoid the same given the uncertainty of them immediately receiving pensions upon retirement should the system be overhauled so it is possible we would like want to to ano, to to, ano, to um, appeal to our honorable senators that uh, we should you know, we should really look uh, on the possible uh, middle ground that we can really see uh, the that uh, the moral uh, welfare of our people will be uh, will be taken care of uh, during our discussion uh, there is no problem if uh, the, you know, the system will be given to the new entrants they all uh, you know unanimously agree but in the four uh, uh, presentation and even the seven areas including uh, uh, the uh, lump sum that will be given will be reduced from 36 uh, months to 18 months there are some you know, some adverse uh, adverse reaction if this is still uh, financially impossible we are very amenable and open to modifications in the system so long as these are these are fair and equitable to the military and the MUP and also it is based on the financial soundness or scientific actuarial science. The men and women of the Armed Forces are fully committed uh, to their oath. Our soldiers, airmen, sailors and marines are always willing and ready to defend our country and protect our people from all threats. The AP continues to obtain the highest approval, satisfaction, and trust rating from the Philippine populace. As the officer in charge of BND, it is secretary check duty constantly look uh, out for the troops' welfare, and one of them is the assurance of its modest life upon retirement. In fact, the president also uh, gave my impression that uh, he is very much, uh, very much concerned on the impact of this MUP on uh, the moral and welfare of uh, our personnel and policemen. And uh, he wanted that uh, there should be a continuous discussion to, to have the common ground. At the end of the day, ensuring a fair, equitable retirement and pension is the least we can, we can do for the brave men and women of the armed forces of the Philippines who continue to lay their lives on the line protecting the Filipino people and defending the Philippines. Uh, for the information of everybody, also uh, the, you know, the increase of the, the, you know, the pay and allowances of uh, the soldiers only come uh, and fully fully realized in 2019, uh, your, your honors. Actually, we are very thankful for the previous administration for giving us this opportunity that our uh, pay and allowance have been doubled. Uh, with that, uh, marami salamat po. Thank you, uh, Secretary Galvez, for your opening statement. We proceed now with the 
Philippine National Police. Do you have any opening statement? Honorable Senator Jingoy Ernesto Estrada, Chairperson, Committee on National Defense and Security, Peace Unification and Conservation. Senator Ronald Bato de la Rosa, sir. Senator Bongo. To the distinguished members of the Senate, fellow public servants, a pleasant morning to all. I'm Police General, Brigadier General Ross Alvarado, the Acting Deputy Director for Controllership. At the outset, and in behalf of the men, women, and officers of the PNP, I would like to extend my utmost gratitude for inviting us to this hybrid joint public hearing on the proposed military and human personnel pension reforms law. Such invitation manifests your valued recognition and having all the stakeholders participate in the discussion of this contentious matter. Relative thereto, the PNP expresses its support for the immediate passage of this legislative measure, as this would ensure the fiscal viability of government pension funds. The DIG has also directed all the bureaus in each attached agencies to submit their respective positions on the four features of the proposed MUP reform law. Hence, the PNP submitted a letter, a letter dated May 3, 2023, addressed to the Secretary of the DIG, the Honorable Attorney Benjamin D. Abelos Jr., stipulating the PNP's position on the following four important issues to it. A, applicability of the law, whether or not the proposed bill should apply to both new entrants and active personnel. B, on the proposed pensionable age, whether or not MUPs receive their pension at 56 years old, regardless of the number of years in the service. C, on the mandatory contributions for active personnel and new entrants, similar to the GSIS pensioners, and D, automatic indexation as to whether there will be no automatic indexation of pension to the salary of active personnel of similar rank. Thus, upon careful perusal of the applicable laws and taking into consideration the importance of the retirement and pension reform system, the PNP has propounded propounded that on, on all the four issues, our, our position is that the proposed bill should apply to new entrants only, in line with the principle of prospectivity of statutes and non-diminution of benefits. This is further so considering that MUPs are not, not like any other government employees whose services are required or are on call 24 hours a day. Lately, on May 8, 2023, a small group meeting was held at the Ligaspi Ballroom, Makati Diamond Residences, being organized by the Presidential Legislative Liaison Office to discuss the proposed bill on the MUP retirement and pension reform system. During the meeting, the following seven key reform proposals of the MUP bill were then presented by Ms. Rosalia Vidillon, the National Teacher. A. The reform to apply to all active personnel and new entrants. B. Adjustment of pension benefits by up to 1.5% within a given year, subject to evaluation of economic conditions and actuarial life of pension fund. C. MUPs start receiving their monthly pension at 57 years old. D. Mandatory contribution for active personnel and new entrants that will ultimately inure for their benefits. E. MUPs to receive immediately upon retirement a lump sum equal to 18 months of the monthly retirement pay regardless of age at retirement. F. All contributions and proceeds from assets shall accrue exclusively to each MUP agency's own trust fund and G. Separate trust fund committees shall be established to govern the funds. The National Teacher also recommended during the meeting to for the revival of the Technical Working Group for the MUP Retirement and Pension Reform System under the PLLO. In view of this development, it is then imperative that the PNP will also undertake a supplemental review and re revisiting of its position on the proposed MUP Reform Bill. The PNP Technical Working Group has been reactivated and tasked to conduct an in-depth review focusing on the seven key features of the proposal and for the subsequent issuance of resolution 
stipulating the PNP's official stand on the matter. Rest assured, sir, that the PNP will immediately submit a supplemental position on this significant place, this obligatory station. Thank you, sir, and maraming salamat po. Thank you, uh, General Alvarado, sir. Alvarado, sir. Alvarado. Opo. Okay. Proceed now with the uh, Philippine Coast Guard. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Uh, thank you, uh, Senator uh, Jingo Ejercito Estrada, sir. And uh, Honorable uh, Senator Ronaldo Ronald, uh, Bato de la Raja, sir. The Philippine Coast Guard understands the need for a more collaborative retirement system for all military and uniform personnel, which seeks to ease the burden of the annual national appropriation and rationalization that, that the, the, and rationalize the existing retirement and pension scheme. With this, the Philippine Coast Guard is amenable to propose changes in the pension system, and after a careful review of the measures being presented while taking into consideration the sentiments of our personnel, the Philippine Coast Guard wishes to convey our position on each reform proposal. On mandatory contribution rates, the Philippine Coast Guard would like to express that we are amenable to a mandatory contribution rate of 5% base on base pay only and not on the gross monthly compensation as proposed. This is in consideration that MUPs have other equally important expenses, particularly providing family support and not to discount their daily personal needs when they retire. On retirement and pension age, the compulsory age of retirement should still be at 56 years old or 36 years in the service, whichever comes later, and maintain the existing optional retirement of 20 years of satisfactory active service with outright pension upon retirement. Undeniably, military and uniform service is intensely physical and stressful that observes a 24 hours and seven days work period away from their families and loved ones most of the time while they are in active service. Retirement at age 56 means that they are given some time to enjoy their family, to recompense for their absence while serving our country. On the coverage and applicability of the unified system, minor revisions on the existing pension scheme shall be implemented on active members. Drastic changes on measures should be avoided so as not to violate the principle of non-diminution of benefits as guaranteed under the Constitution and at the same time maintaining the morale of our Philippine Coast Guard uniformed personnel. Newly enacted laws should be prospective in nature, hence complete overhaul of the pension system shall be applicable only to new entrants. On automatic indexation, the, the Philippine Coast Guard agrees to the removal of automatic indexation provided that there shall be regular pension review and adjustments based on, in, on inflation or at 5%. On monthly pension computation, the monthly pension computation shall still be based on the on the base pay and long longevity pay of the grade next higher than the permanent permanent grade plus held upon retirement. This will compensate the no automatic indexation scheme and at least give premium to the loyalty and on staying on to serve until retirement in order to attain the full economical utilization of services of well-experienced, highly trained, and mature officers. On the MUP AJ's own trust fund, creation of one MUP fund authority for all MUPs, which is composed of all line agencies, with concerned uniform personnel, such as the Department of National Defense, the Department of Interior and Local Government, the Department of Justice, and the DOTR. This is to ensure uniformity and cost efficiency. In closing, the men and women of your Philippine Coast Guard understands the change in the retirement system is inevitable. Nevertheless, Philippine Coast Guard hopes that, abo that the above mentioned position be considered for the benefit of the government at the same time maintaining the morale and welfare of its personnel after retirement. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Your, your honor. Thank you, Vice Admiral uh, Patrimonio. Are you related to the basketball player? Uh, this is under 30 degrees, sir. Thank you. All right. Okay, proceed now with the BJMP.
the uh, <clears throat> to the honorable chairman of this uh, committee, honorable Dingles Padever, Senator Bato de la Rosa, Senator Bongo, and other present this uh, morning, the Bureau of Jail Management and Penology fully support the proposed bills of the Military Uniform Personal Report. Its immediate passage with the following recommendation. First, that this bill would be applicable only to new entrants. That the compulsory retirement age of military uniform personnel remains to 56. Then the mandatory contribution be applicable only to new entrants, MUPs only, with this share where the personnel share of 5% and government share of 16% on the first year, on the second year, 7% and 14% consecutively of 9 and 12 or from the monthly compensation. On the fifth that the previous rule on the payment of retirement pay or voluntarily retirement be retained, that the BGMP be given due representation through is chief in the proposed military and uniform personnel fund authority board of directors that the, that the retirement for the next higher pay grade for the purposes of retirement pay and benefits be retained for the active military personnel only. With this, we're hoping for your consideration of our recommendation on the Senate bills seeking to provide a unified system for the separation, retirement, and pension of military and uniform personnel. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman and other centers present. This uh, public hearing for giving us opportunity to present the BGMP's position and comments. Good day, Paul, and maraming salamat. Thank you, Superintendent. What's your name again? Naka, naka... Ruel Rivera, sir. Ruel Rivera. Yes, sir. Ano yung JC? J ano? Jail chip superintendent. Ah, uh, jail. Allergic kasi ako si jail. <laughs> so, Bureau of Fire. Thank you, Mr. Chair. To the Honorable Committee on National Defense, headed by the good Senator Jinkoy Estrada, sir, to Senator Bato de la Rosa, to Senator Bongo, and other members of this legislators present, good morning. I'm Chief Superintendent Jesus Fernandez, and I'm tasked to speak today on the legislative proposals on behalf of the Bureau of Fire Protection. Reforms on the retirement system of the MUP had long been endeavored by several past Congresses. However, due to the intricacy of the issues, the vastness and depth of its impact, and the sensitivities on the retirement particulars of the system, Resolutions has never been achieved. The result of the persisting ballooning pension cost up to this date, as a former Senator Franklin Drillon said during one of the committee hearings in the 18th Congress, the Congress must propose reforms that will produce the least sensitivities to the retirement benefits of the MUP. The Bureau of Fire Protection fully understands the urgency of the reforms emphasizes on the imminent ballooning of the pension funding requirements. While we subscribe to the noble intents of the proposals, we seek to buttress a balanced contemplation between two government interests in issue. One, an adequate remuneration for our military and uniform personnel for their services. And two, the adjustment of such benefit to ensure sustainability of government funds. We submit that it is the general position of the BFP that the reform should only be applied to new entrants. First, the benefits bestowed to MUP personnel under Republic Act number 6975, 9263, and 8551, and other relevant, relevant laws, decrees, and issuances should apply to those who enter the service during the effectiveness of these laws. One of the major considerations why active MUP personnel entered the service is the retirement package of the MUP person, for MUP personnel. Second, 
Retirement laws are social legislations. The objective of the retirement laws is primarily to provide for the retiree's sustenance and hopefully even comfort when he no longer has the capacity, capability to earn a living. Third, to amend the existing retirement benefits being enjoyed by active MUP personnel is to violate the principle of diminution of benefits. To emphasize the existing retirement benefits were unitarily given by the government to active personnel when they entered the service by virtue of the aforementioned laws and were not consistently applied since the effectivity of these laws. For the existing retirement laws of the MUP were enacted into law in recognition of the peculiar mandates of military and uniform personnel which differs from civilian services. They are constantly exposed to environmental, psychological, economic, and political risks and hazards on significant levels. Thus, the retirement benefits are regarded as gratuity for the personal services for the government. As far as comment on the specific changes on the retirement particulars being proposed by subject Senate bills, we already submitted our position paper containing the provisions we were amended. We were amenable and not amenable, Mr. Chair. Thank you and good morning. Thank you, uh, Chief Superintendent Fernandez. Right. Proceed now with the representative of uh, the B4. Greetings to our honorable senators, uh, Senator Jingo Estrada. Senator Pato de la Rosa, Senator Bongo, and two other government officials present. The Bureau of Corrections is a new member of the Uniform Service. By virtue of Republic Act RA 10575, Bureau of Corrections Act of 2013, which was approved last 24 May 2013 and took effect on the same year after its publication as required under the law. To date, the Bureau, the Bureau for Uniform Personnel have no approved separation, retirement, and pension plan. Its retirement and separation benefit system for uniform personnel was duly reviewed by the DOJ and endorsed to the B, uh, DBM or budget of Department of Budget and Management, but was withdrawn in anticipation of the passage of a new law, which is uh, we are now taking up. The Bureau Corps fully subscribe, subscribes to the intent and spirit of the proposed bills as it gears toward sound fiscal management and sustainability of NUP separation, retirement, and pension system. However, there are provisions in the proposed law which Bureau Corps have, have some reservations. Number one, as regards the age requirement of 65 years old and the 30 years of satisfactory active service requirement, the attainment of uh, 65 years old or the accumulation of 30 years of satisfactory active service, uh, which ever comes later, should constitute the compulsory retirement of the NUP. As to the proposed establishment of the NUP fund authority that will handle the government or govern the funds, a separate trust fund for each agency must be established to govern these funds. It is recommended, recommended that all contributions and proceeds from the assets shall accrue exclusively to each NUP agency, agency's own trust fund. The BUCOR's position is for the creation of a non-appropriated fund for BUCOR Uniform Personnel Retirement Plan patterned after the United States Army Non-Appropriated Fund Employee Retirement Plan. Under this NAF Retirement Plan, BUCOR personnel would contribute certain percentage of their salary to fund the retirement. The contributions of BUCOR personnel and the Bureau's contribution will be deposited in a Bucor's NAF Retirement Trust Fund, and those funds will be invested by the trust 
and used to pay the retirement benefits of Bucor personnel when they retired. Likewise, there are several land assets of Bucor which are under the exclusive control of the Bucor in accordance with Republic Act 10575 and, in, and its implementing rules and regulations. Under the law, Bucor has absolute authority to design, develop, formulate, and implement land use development plans and policies. And these real properties of Bucor shall be used as means to promote sustainability, both income and non-income generating programs. Portions of the proceeds thereof may be used to finance the livelihood program that will be beneficial for Bucor's personnel in sustaining its retirement plan, which is established in accordance with the proposed Senate bill. As regards to other provisions of these proposed bills, Bucor leave it to the sound judgment of this honorable committee. Respectfully submitted for honorable com committee's consideration. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. General Katapang. Yes, sir.